On April 15, 1985, a fire broke out on the 28th floor of a 7th Avenue skyscraper in Midtown Manhattan. It quickly progressed and ultimately destroyed a number of floors on the building and blew the windows out, showering glass onto 53rd Street. The fire commissioner described it as one heck of a fire. One reason it became one heck of a fire was that the fire department was not called immediately. A company called Homes Protection provided the fire alarms and a monitoring service. As soon as an alarm sounded in the building, Homes would notify the fire department so they could respond as soon as possible. When there were works going on in the building, the building operators sometimes advised Homes to temporarily ignore alarms in the building. That happened two days before the fire. The building operators called Homes to suspend the service and Homes did so, automatically resuming the service a few hours later. The following morning, the building supervisor called Homes to resume service. He didn't know they had already automatically done this. He spoke to an operator who was an untrained, inexperienced substitute worker. The worker became confused because the client was asking him to activate a system that was already active. Somehow, he changed the building's alarm status from active to inactive. When the fire happened the following morning, the alarm sounded, but the operator at Homes saw that the monitoring was inactive, so he did not call in the fire department. In fact, it was a very real fire. The building operators sued Homes in contract and negligence, and Homes raised the defence that the contract of service specifically limited liability for negligence to just $55.50. The building operators counted that the limitation was only for negligence and not for gross negligence. The Supreme Court in the First Judicial Department found that there was no triable issue of gross negligence. The Court of Appeals said, It is the public policy of this state, however, that a party may not insulate itself from damages caused by grossly negligent conduct. This applies equally to contract clauses purporting to exonerate a party from liability and clauses limiting damage to a nominal sum. They concluded that the issue of gross negligence should have been put to a jury. From this case, we confirm that in New York, you cannot, by contract, protect yourself from liability for gross negligence. Mm -hmm.